Hey, everybody. Welcome to the No Notice live stream, or I guess I did put out word uh, a couple of hours ago. Uh, I didn't uh, plan on doing this one, but uh, we have some follow in on information from uh, the episode I did on Saturday morning. So let me start before I bring on Brian. Let me start with the chronology of this, this situation and, and how I came into knowledge of it. So the first thing that crossed my desk was Saturday morning, I saw this letter, uh, which is from the Pentagon Press Association to Mr. Meager and Major General Ryder, Mr. Meager being Chris Meager, who is the Assistant Secretary of Defense for Public Affairs. He ran comms for the Buddha Judge campaign back in 2020, and General Ryder who just pinned on a second star, so Major General Ryder. So the letter reads, the fact that he has been, meaning Secretary Austin, has been at Walter Reed National Military Medical Center for four days, and the Pentagon is only now alerting the public late on a Friday evening is an outrage. It falls far below the normal disclosure standards that are customary by other federal departments when senior officials undergo medical procedures or are temporarily incapacitated. The public has a right to know when U.S. cabinet members are hospitalized under anesthesia or when duties are delegated as a result of any medical procedure. That has been the practice even up to the president's level. As the nation's top defense leader, Secretary Austin has no claim to privacy in the situation. I know some folks have mentioned that. What about, you know, medical privacy and that sort of thing? So as a consequence of that letter, I did this episode on Saturday morning. Maybe some of you saw it. And in that episode, I basically read the letter and uh, said that, yeah, this is... Uh, curious, let's say, um, and uh, said we'd be on the case. So let me now bring in my good friend, retired Navy Captain Brian McGrath. Commander, who, Commander, I, I left the day before I would have been promoted to captain. That, I always make that mistake, don't I? That's all uh, right. You've me on that no report. stolen valor here. <laughs> we don't do stolen valor on this channel. This is not the channel for that. Like every patch I have, I earn. Okay. Very good. Right. Very good. So remind the audience that Brian is a surface warfare officer, commanded uh, an Arleigh Burke. What what ship did you have? DDG-84, USS Bulkley. Uh, so this is in the news. In fact, today you were on the hustings. You went by the Pentagon and then you went to the Surface Navy Association convention there in Crystal City. It must be action packed in light of all the goings on in uh, the Arabian Peninsula waters. Yeah, it's all week, and um, I think the SWO daddies are uh, in their element. Yeah, I love it. I love it. Uh, so we have covered uh, the high points, including most recently the Houthi boats getting taken out by H-60s firing hellfires. Uh, but this is a different topic. So you have a sub stack that's fantastic, uh, conservative Wahoo. Thank you. You're Thank a very you. proud uh, UVA grad. Uh, I think the only thing more obnoxious than a Naval Academy grad is a UVA grad, and uh, a so Notre Dame, a Notre Dame grad. That's probably true, isn't it? Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so this morning, you put out a Substack that was called DoD Follies that that went over how this story unfolded, as it were, because I thought the crime, the the error, maybe I'm overstating it by saying the crime, but I thought the error was didn't tell the Pentagon press corps in a timely fashion, right? And I was, okay, that, that's, that's the transgression. But as this unfolded, let's just say it got worse and worse. Yeah. yeah. So talk it, to us um, about what you, you bring out in your, uh, in your piece this morning. Yeah, I think that uh, I have a respect uh, I think appropriate amount of respect for the job that the press does and the responsibilities they have uh, as an unofficial part of our uh, democracy. But um, I don't think, um, 
I don't think that was the major crime that they weren't uh, uh, informed in a timely fashion. I think the the, the primary mistake here was uh, potentially one of a broken chain of command of U.S. military forces, which flows from the president through the Secretary of Defense to the geographic combatant commanders. The chairman of the Joint Chiefs is sort of in there because he transmits those orders. Um, uh, and so that chain of command potentially was broken. We don't know whether it was or not. Uh, the Deputy Secretary of Defense uh, from her um, vacation in uh uh, Puerto Rico uh, was reported to have assumed some of the duties of the Secretary of Defense. Um, there's just too many holes. There's a lot of holes in what should be a very, very solid story of command and control of American armed forces from the president through the secretary, transmitted by the chairman to the geographic combatant commanders. And it sounds a lot like that was not the case here. Don't know for sure, but it sounds that way. So let's go through the TikTok as it unfolded, as as we understand it. So just before Christmas, Secretary Austin goes into the hospital for, uh, let's call it an elective procedure. We don't know the nature of that. And then on New Year's Day, he has sharp pain. Again, we didn't, we know no detail of it, fully respecting uh, his his medical privacy. So he's admitted to the ICU. That's January 1st. On January 2nd, Kath Hicks, Under Secretary or Assistant Secretary Hicks, who De- we know Deputy from Secretary. Deputy Secretary, thank you. Yeah. Um, Deputy Secretary Hicks who we know from her days at CSIS, uh, where she was the Kissinger chair. She's got her PhD from MIT uh, in international affairs. Very sharp uh, official uh, and and, uh, a great person in in addition to that. So qualified for the job. But she gets the the word, hey, uh, as she's in Puerto Rico, as you've pointed out, she gets the word, you're now acting SecDef. And again, we're, we're extrapolating from limited information, but she stated that she didn't know that he was in the hospital at that point, right? So you assume the duties, and I, I'm not sure why you wouldn't ask, so why am I now, what's going on that I'm now SecDef? Further, you also point out in your substack or you question whether she had the means to do the job fully in terms of the comms gear and the other stuff that they have, right? You say she had her security team most likely, but the other stuff to fully do the job, she may not have had. What 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 are those details potentially? Well, at the, let's start at the very top. The Secretary of Defense travels the world in a tricked out 757 um, that has a considerable uh, communications C2 package on it that allows him to exercise command and control of forces while he's in the air to, to some extent. It's not as potentially as good as what he has uh, at the Pentagon, but it's presumably pretty darn good. Um, there is also a limited amount of capability that travels with him in the big black cars that follow him around everywhere he goes. Uh, the you know sort of mobile C2. Um, I I don't know if any of that was made available to Deputy Secretary Hicks. Um, we don't know. Uh, but I would like to think that if she were assuming the duties of the Secretary of Defense, that she would have been provided with those tools to carry out those, those duties. Um, again, we don't know. Uh, I, you know, whether we had a right to know that the Secretary of Defense was going into a medical treatment facility for some procedure, I don't know. Once he, uh, once he stepped aside even temporarily, that then becomes, I think, a very public matter. Um, and I think this, this uh, has turned into a really unfortunate 
fumble of the highest order. Well, we'll talk about sort of DOD comms or PAO comms 101, right? Go ugly yeah. early is one of the axioms. Um, and how, in essence, a one-day story is now a five-plus-day story and, and continuing as each factoid emerges and captivates another news cycle. We don't know how long it took uh, De Deputy Secretary Hicks to get back to D.C. So, again, to your point, we don't know if they provided her with the comms gear and the other full rig that goes with being SECDAF, regardless of where you are on the planet, and we don't know how long it took her to get back. Okay, so that's January 2nd. January 3rd goes by. I think on January 3rd, the chairman of the Joint Chiefs, General C.Q. Brown, was uh, was informed. So he went 48 hours or so uh, without knowing that his immediate boss was in the hospital. And then Thursday, the president and the White House, and that includes the National Security Council and the National Security Advisor, Jake Sullivan, all these folks are informed that he's been hospitalized for three plus days at that, at that point. That to me is the most over the top fact that's emerging here of, of all of them. I know you, you felt the same way as you express in your Substack uh, editorial this morning. Yeah, it's, um, and I look at, you know, and um, nobody comes out of this looking good. I look at the chairman of the Joint Chiefs, right? Apparently the chairman of the Joint Chiefs was told about this, um, either on day one or day two. And, he, and at which point he became senior man with a secret, which is some something we're always told all the, all the time in the military, don't be, don't be that guy. Um, uh, and he, so I, I, I don't understand. He doesn't look good coming out of this. Depsec Def Hicks doesn't look good coming through this, you know, for the reasons you suggested. Did she ask questions? But then again, we don't know what the dynamic between her and the secretary was or is. But what we do know is that the president of the United States was left without continuity and control of the uh, of the American armed forces without his knowledge. It's just it's just unacceptable. It's absolutely unacceptable. And uh, uh, it sounds like they're going to accept it. <laughs> uh, well, well, we'll see. Let, so, hey, yeah. can you pull your laptop screen down a little bit so you're higher in the picture? Because when Carrie puts How's the, that when Mrs. Yeah, stay there. Don't no slouching. Right. This isn't this isn't the wardroom. Um, okay. So now we go to January 5th and kind of the jig is up. So. Major General writer puts out this sort of uh, boilerplate. Um, on the evening of January 1st, Secretary of Defense Lloyd Austin was admitted to Walter Reed National Military Medical Center for complications following a recent elective medical procedure. Can you take that down, please? He is recovering well and is expecting to resume his full duties today. At all times, the Deputy Secretary of Defense were prepared to act and exercise the powers of the Secretary if required. So, that may not be completely true as we're flagging here. We're, we're not saying it's not true, but it may not be true. Further, the initial word that emerged from Major General Ryder was an elective procedure. And suddenly we're kind of uh, moving the, the narrative to include uh, complications following elective procedures. So again, we don't need to know the details of, of what specifically the medical situation is, but certainly the the dire circumstance is raised once it goes from elective to and oh by the way he's in the ICU, um, and, and so it, it's it's just a little bit disingenuous to my eye, and and that's what is a little bit galling as this unfolded. Here then the next statement is from SecDef himself. And this was on January 6th. He says, I want to thank the amazing doctors and nursing staff at Walter Reed for exceptional care they have delivered to me and for personal warmth they have shown my family. I also appreciate all of the outreach and well wishes from colleagues and friends. Charlene and I are very grateful for your support. 
I'm very glad to be on the men and look forward to returning to the Pentagon soon. I also understand the media concerns about transparency, transparency, and I recognize I could have done a better job ensuring the public was appropriately informed. I will commit, or I commit to doing better. But this is important to say. This was my medical procedure, and I take full responsibility for my decisions about disclosure. So I, I don't know what, what that means uh, with respect to, did he not tell anybody or did he direct, for instance, Major General Ryder to stay off the air about this? You know, when he says, this was my medical procedure and I take full responsibility for my decisions about disclosure. Right? I think some of this is bigger than him because he is SecDef, um, as stated in that letter from the Pentagon Press Association, Austin has no claim to privacy in this situation, right? I mean, sort of by 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 billet, by doctrine. And let's just say up front, we, because some, some people have, have said in the comments after that episode, hey, Mooch, nowhere in the, did you wish him like a speedy recovery? Uh, I, I do, of course, as I'm sure you do, wish him good health and a speedy recovery. However, I will just say that, my sense of protocol is robbed when I get the sense that you would prefer I didn't know at all, right? And the fact I do know is kind of a, a, a leak of sorts or just a dogged Pentagon press corps wondering why you do an info drop on late on a Friday night, right? So what are your thoughts about uh, what the way that the, the secretary put uh, his part of uh, the explanation? I think... Um... There's a whiff of a suggestion in the Pentagon Reporters Association note that he has no right to privacy because he's a public official. They don't say that directly, but it comes close to that. I think that's not true. I think the Secretary of Defense has some privacy. I think if the Secretary of Defense was going in for a minor uh, medical procedure, he should have informed the Chief of Staff of the White House. Should have called chief staff and said, hey, I'm going into Walter Reed. Uh, we don't know whether he went under. If he went under, then he damn sure should have passed the ball to the uh, deputy. But if he went over there for, you know, to cut a little cancerous growth off his shoulder and he wound up having a coronary, we, that's completely, you know, unpredictable. Um, his right to privacy uh diminishes as time goes on and uh, it, it looks more and more like this is the gang that can't could, couldn't shoot straight. So I think in, in terms of um, what, what a competent public figure does when stuff like this happens, uh, his, he, he should have early on uh, come clean and talked about whatever it is he went in for um, and 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 what has happened? It's the the horse is out of the barn now. Can I make one additional point? Um, I don't like that there is a uniformed military person carrying the water for a civilian uh, political appointee, which is what the Secretary of Defense is. I I would rather see some some administration hack standing there with you know doing doing whatever they need to do to defend the secretary of defense i don't like the suggestion that it's a two-star general because i find myself questioning his veracity and i don't want to do that with my two-star general well that's a great point i i didn't even think of that so where is secretary meager in in you know why is he not the guy like you say uh, that's up front with with each one of these statements. Uh, writer's follow on statement on the seventh was was this. He remains hospitalized. Sec Def remains hospitalized at Walter Reed since resuming his duties on Friday evening. The secretary has received operational updates and has provided necessary guidance to his team. He has full access to required secure comms and can use to monitor DOD's day to day operations. Secretary spoke to President Biden yesterday, so that's January 6th, so a full six days, five slash six days after he was admitted to the ICU. 
He's also been in contact with, with Secretary, Deputy Secretary Hicks and the Chairman of the Joint Chiefs, as well as his senior staff. Okay, so that's another. So among the questions is why is are, is this inf this coming from these statements from the uniform guy instead of the civilian guy? Fair question. The other thing that came out is these details like the TikTok one member of the Hask or the Sask at a time, right? Because the House Armed Services Armed Services Committee members or chairman or the Senate Armed Services chairman were equally unaware um, of his uh, the fact he'd been admitted to the hospital. But one of the, the staff went to a meeting that normally SecDef would be running, and he wasn't there, and there was no explanation as to where he was, and they're just like, oh, okay, I guess whatever. And then in hindsight, they're like, well, that seems like kind of a, you know, a party foul at least that, you know, here I work for the guy. I'm not given any information about where his whereabouts or whatever. It kind of feels like you don't trust me or we're not as close as maybe you, you said we were at the Christmas party, right. Or whatever. Um, so I, I concur entirely that I don't know why, why writer general writer is, is, is the guy here, you know, another question for you. I think an analog it, the most recent analog here is the heart attack that the Commandant of the Marine Corps had a few months ago. And it strikes me that the Marine Corps did not sit on that information. It was it was near, near real time. And General Heckel uh, fleeted up to be the acting Commandant, and thereby it became a, a sympathetic story and a 24-hour story, I'm thinking, right? So if DODPA, the public affairs mechanism, puts out a press release some hours after he's stabilized in the ICU and says, Secretary of Defense Austin has been admitted to Walt Reed National Military Medical Center following complications after an elective procedure. He is stable and resting and conscious. For the time being, Deputy Secretary Kathleen Hicks is the acting secretary. She has all the means to carry out the job. We will keep you updated as the situation develops. Boom. Now, guys like me are like, oh my gosh, get well soon, Mr. Secretary. You know, and what it, what is the reason that you wouldn't say that? Is there some valid concern about international terrorism or Hamas taking advantage of this or Iran putting another frigate to sea against Ike strike group. Why in, in the, in the logic that general Ryder and supposedly Chris Meager, the silent partner uh, put together, because I would imagine that they're in the room with secretary Austin, I'm thinking, right. And they're fashioning um, a strategy. Again, I, I, I wasn't a PAO in the Navy, but I did play that role for three years on, on a very controversial program, the V-22. And I was in the room, sometimes with the assistant secretary or the assistant commandant of the Marine Corps for Aviation, General Howe, and program managers and PEOs. And, and when they're like, OK, we just had an engine fire on the V-22 or we had a hydraulic leak. What do we do? My advice was always, here's the statement. I already had it written. And we, we go now, you know, because I guarantee you, Tom Ricks, Rick Whittle, Joe Neff already know, you know, because we had engineers in the program who didn't like the V-22 and we're sending them PowerPoint slides. So I'm like, get ahead of it. You know, it's like we have learned from this thing. We're ahead. We already have solved the problem, you know, steal the velocity of the story by by going ugly early. So why wouldn't they have done that? You ever hear the expression, um, nobody knows what goes on in a marriage except the two people that are in it? <laughs> um, I think something like that applies to senior staffs, whether it's at the White House or the state or defense. We have no idea. I have no idea. I suppose you have no idea. Um, what the relationships are between 
Mr. Austin, Secretary Austin's staff, Secretary Hicks's staff, Chairman Brown's staff. I don't know. I don't know. But when I stack the dots and, and, and try to work the, my way backwards, I find myself thinking it doesn't smell like a very positive and cooperative staff environment. I don't know for sure. Um, but when you look at what has happened over the last few days or and what had and, and more importantly, what did not happen? Uh, I, I wonder about the staff dynamics that we don't know about, but that we can all who've been on staffs before um, fill in the blanks with. Yeah, great point. Great point. Uh, I've been on two staffs and I was lucky that both were very open and honest and enjoyed uh, the ability to tell truth to power. Uh, but who knows, right? Uh, I've I stood near Secretary Austin at the Army Navy game this year, um, and uh, also the the former chairman of the Joint Chiefs. So remember that last play that we were on like the two foot line. Navy's on like the two foot line. So I'm holding the down box on the Army sidelines. I forget what down it was. Oh, it was, it was fourth down, right? And there's this guy standing right in front of me between me and the side judge. And I'm like, um, I'm about to go, hey, bud. And I look closer. It's General Milley. And I'm like, <laughs> uh, hey, General, do you mind? I, I got to have direct access to the side judge. And he was very cool. He was like, oh, no, no, sorry, sorry, sorry. But I was about to like try to move him out of the way, you know, like, hey, man, you know, yeah. move back. So, ship me. Ship yeah, ship me. Get out of the way. But, you know, Austin was there and all, all the gang, Elon Musk was there. Uh, and he seems like a like a warm, approachable guy. You know, he exudes this sort of warmth. Um, I know he had a great reputation as a four star during his time in the Army. Um, so but to your point, we don't we don't know the goings on, you know, uh, and, and how how if it's like, do they ever wonder where he is or is that just the question best? left unasked you know is that quality you know time for the staff you know those paintings that are can that, that are um comprised solely of a bunch of dots um and they only really come together the further away from the painting you get i, sw I swear to god most most bureaucracies when you get to the top once the ones that i've seen um when you're right in the middle of it and you're the the dots sometimes don't don't make a picture. Um, and it's ugly sometimes at where the sausage is made. Um, and so I don't know this for sure. The, the secretary or the deputy secretary don't take me into their private councils and I am not read into their uh, schedules. I just, I'm just looking backwards and trying to synthesize from what I see and what I think is maybe not a healthy staff environment. Yeah. And that's our concern, right? So as you extrapolate these missteps, of the past week, yeah. again, where from a comms rules and of engagement construct, you make a one-day story into a six-day story by, right, you know, either subterfuge, going Nordo, or in some cases bending the truth. Um, the question is, to the point you're you're making. What does this say about the broader ability to carry out this very important job of seeing to the nation's defense in this most kinetic, chaotic of times? That's because yeah. people are like, hey, man, this is a non story. What are you even caring about it for? Why are you, you know, clickbait? Okay, fair charge. However, as this unfolded, like I said early on, I was, I was ready to just dismiss it as just the beef of the Pentagon Press Association. You know, um, and, uh, you know, it, it's, it seems to be more than that. And we will be on the case. Your final thought in your editorial on your sub stack is it's unclear how much more of this will become public and whether there will be any heads in baskets. My guess is there won't be. That's right. Yeah, I, I think um, I think everybody comes out of this 
uh, dinged and having lost some uh, respect and some trust. So we, we shouldn't expect Secretary Austin's resignation. The reports I'm reading in the open press are that uh, the president wouldn't take it if he gave it to him. So I, I'm not sure. Um, you know, again, that's another thing, right? We've got a war in Ukraine. We've got a war in the Middle East. We've got, you know, a, 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 an aggressive China. Is now the time to swap out your secretary of defense because he uh, because he screwed up. Uh, I don't know. And, and getting back for a second to the people who think this is clickbait and blah, blah, blah. Yeah, I guess so. If you're if you're watching this from the, you know, from an outer electron ring and you're looking in and you're saying, well, this is just a much ado about nothing. It may look that way. The problem is when you are aware of how forces are controlled, especially nuclear forces, uh, and you then recognize that the Secretary of Defense plays a not insignificant role in that uh, in that chain. And um, to have a break in the continuity of government is unacceptable. Very well said. Well, Commander Brian McGrath joining us from a location near the Surface Navy Association convention going on all week. Are you having dinner with the, the boys tonight or some goings on there? I am having dinner with former Undersecretary of the Navy, Dino Avilas, this evening. Okay. Well, enjoy. Yes. Um, again, this is a, a great week to have it in light of everything going on with the Surface Navy, uh, particularly in, in the Red Sea and the Gulf of Aden. And uh, we'll ha look to have you on again soon for a debrief on, on what you find out while you're there. Love to. Everybody watching, subscribe to... Brian Substack, Cons Wahoo. What's the specific uh, link that it's, they can subscribe at? Uh, Conservativewahoo.substack.com, probably. I wish I should probably know that, except yeah, I don't I'll, care enough. You can <laughs> text me and I'll drop it into the episode description. <laughs> uh, All right. Thank thanks, you. everybody, for showing up. Thanks to Mrs. Mooch for, for moderating the comments. Thank you, Mrs. Mooch. Um, and, uh, you know, we'll look forward to seeing everybody again very soon. If you're not already a subscriber, become one so you don't miss good conversations like this, you know. And uh, we'll look forward to seeing you guys again very soon. See you. Take See care, you, Bye-bye.